We're reading from the Sriman Bhagavatam, continuing on with Canto 2, chapter 10, text number 7. The chapter is entitled Bhagavatam is the answer to all questions. Oh, okay. What did I say? Seven, did I? Okay, we'll do eight. <laughs> eight today, Slika. Yo, hang on, um. Yo, Jat Miko Yam Purusha. So Sabe Vati Vaika. Yasta Probaya Vicheda. Purusha Yadi Otika. Yo, Jat Miko Yam Purusha. So save vadi devika, so save vadi devika, Adhyatmika is possessed of the sense organs. I am this Purusha, personality, Sa, He, Aso, that, Eva, also, Adhidevika, controlling Deity, Ya, that which, Tatra, there, Ubaya, of both. Bicheda, separation, Purushaha, person, he, four, Adibotika, visible body or the embodied living entity. Translation, the individual person possessing different instruments of senses is called the Adiatmic person. An individual controlling deity of the senses is called Adidavik. The embodiment seen on the eyeballs is called the Adibotic person. <clears throat> Purple by Srila Prabhupada. The supreme controlling summoned bonum is the personality of God in his plenary portion of Paramatma. For the Super Soul Manifestation Bhagavad Gita 1042, it is All the controlling deities like Vishnu, Brahma and Shiva are different manifestations of the Paramatma feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, <coughs> who exhibits himself in such manners by entering into each and every universe generated from him. But still apparently there are divisions of the controller and the control. <clears throat> For example, in the food controlling department, the controller of food, now we can all relate to this, can't we? Is a person made of the same ingredients as a person who is controlled. Similarly, each and every individual in the material world is controlled by the higher demigods. For example, we have our senses, but the senses are controlled by superior controlling deities. We cannot see without light. And the supreme control of light is the sun. Sun god is in the sun planet. And we, the individual human beings, or any other being on this earth are all controlled by the sun god as far as our eyes are concerned. Similarly, all the senses we have are controlled by the superior demigods who are also as much living entities as we are. But one is empowered while the other is controlled. The controlled living entity is called the, the atmic person and the controller is called the Hari Devi person. All these positions in the material world are due to different fruit of activities. Any individual living can become, or any individual living being can become the sun god or even Brahma or any other god in the upper planetary system by a higher grade of pious work. 
And similarly, one becomes controlled by the higher demigods by lower grades of fruitive activities. So, every individual living entity is subject to the supreme control of the Paramatma, who puts everyone in different positions of control and the controlled. That which distinguishes the control and the control, that is the material body, is called the Adibhote Purusha. The body is sometimes called Purusha, as confirmed the Vedas in the following hymn. Sava Esa Purusha Nara This body is called the Anaras embodiment. This body depends on food. The living entity which is embodied does not eat anything. However, because the owner is spirit in essence, oh, um, oh, I'll say this again. The body depends on food. The living entity which is embodied does not eat anything, however, because the owner is spirit in essence. Make sense? The material body requires replacement of matter for the wearing and tearing of the mechanical body. <clears throat> Therefore, the distinction between the individual living entity and the controlling planetary deities is in the Anurasamaya body. The sun might have a gigantic body, and the man may have a smaller body, but all these visible bodies are made of matter, nonetheless. The sun god and the individual person who are related as controller and control are the same spiritual parts and parcel of the Supreme Being. And it is the Supreme Being who places different parts and parcels in different positions. And thus the conclusion is that the Supreme Person is the shelter of all. Just read the shloka again. The individual person possessing different instruments of senses is called the Adiyatic person. An individual controlling deity of the senses is called Adidavik. Bodyman seen on the eyeballs is called the Adibaltic person. Omagyanati mirandasya chananjana slakya chapsurum militam yenatas me shri gulve namaha Durga me pari mendasya kalats kalhe patimaho Svakripa yustu danina shantu shantu valambanam So we are continuing on with the Lord's description of the creation. So yesterday, uh, <coughs> you know Prabhu elaborately talked about the ten uh, different stages of creation. So we're talking largely about the third part now, which is called Stanam. So we have the creation, we have the cosmic manifestation. The third one, if you remember, was the planetary system. So within this cosmic manifestation of the Lord, all the energy is there, so the Lord creates all the different planets. And then the first living entity, Lord Brahma, comes into this creation. He's given the task of population, populating um, all of the different planets with material bodies. And he's given all the material elements at his disposal to create different types of bodies. So then when these bodies are ready to go, the Paramatma, comes in, some of bone of all creation, Paramatma, he comes in and he impregnates these bodies with his own uh, self, a part, a small part of himself. One ten thousand part, the tip of a hair, in all the different bodies, doesn't matter what size the body. Um, in the Vedas they have the atomic measurements, just like in science we think that we're really gone so far that we have the great and the small and the atom, but the atom was there in Vedic science. It was described as to be the Anu. And so these atomic measurements were measured. So this one was giving that you get tip of a hair, you split it into a hundred pieces, and you get one of those hundred pieces of tip of the hair and you split it into a hundred again. Okay? That's the size of the Paramatma, the 
super soul within the heart. And of course, with the paramat that comes the atma, as uh, uh, Vinod was explaining, or Maharaj was explaining yesterday in the supplementary answers or questions that the living entity comes out of this white hot stem that is emanating from Lord Vishnu and he enters into these bodies and he populates the bodies. So, Drill Papa mentions very quickly, in, briefly, I say briefly because he doesn't actually give the purport to his, uh, doesn't give the translation, but he just gives the sloka, Krishna Svart, oh, wrong sloka, Atava Bahu Naiti Na Kim Yati Tavajuna. This Sabyami Ramku Islamic comes in as the Dojagat that's out of chapter 10, verse number 42. That what need is there, O Arjuna, for all this detailed knowledge with a single fragment of myself I pervade and support the entire universe? Uh, so Krishna is there with these single fragments there supporting not only this universe but all the other different universes. So we are talking about gigantic bodies. So sometimes we talk about living entities, gigantic living entities. To my knowledge, the most um, gigantic living entity I know of is the whale. Right? It's pretty big. And then the small living entities, we can talk about the ant. Skrustele. So these two living entities, they both are impregnated. With, this, um, with the Paramatma. Not only is there a soul there in these bodies, but the Paramatma is also there. But what is different, they are given a different uh, set of senses to work with. So that is the case of all the different living entities. So we're all individuals in our own right, but still uh, we are the sum and bone of the um, manifestation supreme personality we've got it just like for instance the whale he's got a particular uh, so many particular attributes that the whales they are very cooperative they travel in big pods and when they want to catch fish they cooperate they surround little krill and they go in one at a time so the fish don't get out those little fishes don't get out and then they eat and then they go back and then they look somebody else and they're very attached to their child and they migrate for many many thousands of kilometers like they go from um we see them up the coast of australia they go up north they propagate they come from the Antarctic, travel thousands of miles so how do they get there that's their special sense that they have, the sense perception. We need radar, we need satellites to go anywhere, right? Whales, they travel normally. And as do other fish and other species, birds, and everything, they all have their own particular set of senses that maybe we as human beings don't have. So uh, each individual created being has that, those different attributes, like for instance, the ant. Now that is very, um, we write ants off, we see a little ant there, we take no notice of it, but it's a part of a colony. And it's a, it could be a working ant or a soldier ant, and they serve the queen ant, so they have their own social order. And they attribute if it's gonna rain, you see them climbing up the walls. If you wanna have a look at ant colony, just go to these pillars over here, and every pillar, there are thousands of ants hundreds of thousands of them. Probably the whole population of human beings in Australia is the ant population around the temple here. And they have their own social structure here. Right, so this is the um, glory of the Lord. So we as human beings, we are controlling to some degree, we're controlling all the different living entities there because we have uh, the intelligence, the attribute of intelligence, which animals don't have. Of course, we can ask uh, about our own self, um, self within the self, the spirit soul, but the animals are just completely attached to the three modes of material nature, eating, sleeping, and mating and defending. But um, within this energy, so we are part of this. So we are the greater living entities. And then, of course, there's the 
living entities that are greater than us, the demigods. So Srila Prabhupada spends a fair bit of time describing how uh, the demigods are controlling the uh, status of the universe. So we have our different... Um, hang on, just... So Prabhupada explained the divisions of the controllers. So as I said, we control all the... Low. Well, we, we can manage the lower species. We're not in control of anything, but we still uh, we have this relationship. So the demigods, they are our controllers. They sustain us. Just Prabhupada gives that example uh, very elaborately in this purport here, how Surya, the sun god, we are so dependent on him. So the sun is this huge manifestation. It's bigger than all the planets in the solar system put together. And it's this one big body. But there's a person behind this sun god. And the light is emanating. And with the sun, we get the light and the heat and so many other different things. So we are being controlled by the sun god. Similarly, so with the light, we can see. <coughs> with the heat, we can feel, touch uh, the warmth. So also with... Um, Breathing. We have a demigod for breathing. Who would that be? Vayu. Yeah. So Vayu is blowing the wind here and there and we're able to breathe. And similarly we have Agni, the fire god. He gives us the so fire in so many different ways. The fire of digestion. Um, the energy that we feel from the fire, the heat, how it transforms into food and so on and so forth. And in this way we have 33 million demigods that are in charge of this universe, that are controlling in so many different ways, different controlling, uh, controllers of the universe, the, the managers of the universe. So I just sort of gave this little bit of a synopsis. So now we get into these three um, categories of Adi Devik, Adi Bhautik, and Adi Atmik, which, uh, which is being mentioned here in this text state. So uh, in reference to these, so we have the Adi Atmika. So that is uh, right at the beginning when Brahma creates these bodies and then these bodies become impregnated with the super soul and the time element comes into play and it's, uh, it's like a big drama action lights action camera and everything's put into motion the whole universe is put into motion and so these bodies they're called the adiatmic bodies that are actually moving within the universe the soul within the body so that is part of the lord's creation so then the second part, the Adi Devik, that is the controller of that body that is moving around. As I said, there's 33 million custodians of the universe and they're helping us on, they're helping that living entity on the path back to Godhead. Because actually this, uh, this uh, creation is like the third part of it, it's also called uh, Vaikunta, uh, the Lord's called Vaikunta Vijay that he, he victories in Vaikuntha. So this is the basic element, uh, basic plan of the Lord that we stay in this universe and we serve Vaikuntha Vijay so we can go back to his planet of Vaikuntha. So this is the plan. So the demigods are keeping us on the path. That's their position. But sometimes Prabhupada mentioned and in the seventh, in the seventh chapter also mentioned that the people uh, misunderstand that the demigods who are guiding us on this path like Surya and Chandra and Agni and so, so on and so forth, that they are the creators, that they are the supreme beings. So they begin to worship the demigods for favours because they see the direct result of the worship that uh, wealth comes from the worship of certain demigods, good health, longevity. They say, this is the way to go. But we are to understand that the demigods are just in the same category as us. They are spirit souls, but they are in control. And so because they're in control, they call the Adi Daviks. 
So we've got the adiatmics that living entities within the body and is being controlled by the higher um, forces which are demigods. The adiatmics and their purpose is actually to bring us back to God. That's the whole system just like you have a system within the government where everybody's supposed to be happy, well fed, have shelter, live in nice houses and um, engage in spiritual activities and in this way they can all be happy. So <clears throat> that third one uh, is because we have the demigods and they're giving us all this light and heat and that, um, Prabhupada explains that this is the source of our food, that because of them we need food because actually as is said that uh, the spirit soul doesn't need any food, the spirit soul is eternal but because the spirit soul is entrapped in the body, the body needs wear, the body gets wear and tear, <laughs> Prabhupada described wear and tear, needs maintenance. So with this maintenance we have to um, provide some sustenance and now that first contact with us, us awareness of our body, that's called Adi Baltic. So we've got Adi Atmik, Adi Devik, and now there's that Adi Balt, the knowledge of Adi Baltic that we are separate from our body. So we have to look after our body. And that brings us into contact with all the other living entities. Um, the demigods, not only demigods, but relationship to us in a sense that this is my body, my hand, my leg, this is my wife, this is my friend, my brother, my mother, my father, uh, and my, so on and so forth. So we have uh, the adibaltic relationship, this is my property. So this is where the third part of it begins. So that is essential for us to exist, that we have to cooperate in the sense so we have enough food and sustenance to eat and so everything's going nicely. It's meant to go nicely. Krishna explains in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, <coughs> verse 10, Sahajakya Prajashrishtva Pravocha Prajapati Anena Pravishyadvam Isa Vosti is to come a dick that in the beginning, right in the beginning creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods, along with sacrifice, jagya, for Vishnu, and blessed them by saying, Be thou happy with this jagya, because its performance will bestow upon you all desirable things. So this uh, soul in the world. So that's God's plan, that um, there's the demigods, there's a living being, and you perform this um, jagya, you actually give uh, respect to the Lord, that this is the Lord's property, and in this way you will go forward, just like if we want anything, if we want something to eat, we will go to someone and ask them, can we have whatever you're growing to eat? He said, well, what have you got in return? We have an exchange, or if we don't, we say, can we have it as a donation? And then we pay respect. So there's always the respect that is given to the person who is providing. And so the ultimate provider, of course, is Krishna. He's the creator of everything. So this provision is given to Krishna by the form of jagya, sacrifice. There's different sort of jagyas in different ages. There's five sacrifices, there's temple worship, there's the recitation of mantras, so on and so forth. So in this way, um, the, there is a, a harmony. So it goes on in the next sloka, um, where it actually explains 3.11 Devan Bhava Tya Ne Na Te Deva Bhava Tam Bhaha Parasparam Bhavatyam Ta Shreyam Param Avastyata So the demigods, they're being pleased by the sacrifice, they'll also please you uh, with this nourishing, the, this nourishing one another and there will reign general prosperity for all. So this is the system, it's very easy, it's like the blueprint that the Lord has given. Here's the material universe, here's the living entities, you pay respect to the demigods who are provided, the demigods 
So I worship Krishna, they're providing sacrifice to um, spring personality of Godhead and everything happens. So when the demigods, as Prabhupada explains here, so when the demigods are pleased, they give you fresh air, right? Fresh air. We're very, very fortunate to have fresh air. Some countries, some cities do not have fresh air. They have very, very poor air quality. You can hardly breathe and you get sick. So air, light, water, fire, uh, they're all entrusted demigods and we get this energy and it's converted to sanctified food stuff. And <coughs> proper explained by offering this food stuff to Krishna, we eat the right foods, Krishna specifies which foods we eat, and in the finer tissues uh, in our memory become sanctified. And when the memory is sanctified, then we can think of the path of liberation. We can go back to Godhead. We feel we go back to Godhead. And so um, we take the Krishna consciousness and go back to Vaikuntha, go back to Krishna Loka. So that is the blueprint of this world, perfect blueprint. So it's fantastic. <laughs> so the, uh, that is the um, situation. But uh, we have the Adi Atmik, Adi Bodhi, Adi Devik, but for most of my devotional life I've looked at them in a different light, you know, with sort of talking about the blueprint, but um, Adi Atmik, Adi Bodhi, usually when we talk about, they're related to the three miseries, isn't it? <laughs> the miseries of the mind, the miseries of living entities, and the miseries that are caused by the demigods. So what's gone wrong? What's happened? So have we strayed from the blueprint? What, where, where, what's happening? So in 3.12 of the um, Bhagavad Gita, the 12th verse, uh, gives us an indication that Istan Bhogam hi eva udav dasyante jagya bhavishtaha ter tato apritad yo Yo, bhukte stena eva star. So, in charge of the various necessities of life, the demigods being satisfied by the performance of jagya supply all the necessities to man. So that's what we've been discussing. But, but, he who enjoys these gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief. Right, so that is the... Um, that's the road to liberation. So Shri Papa explains in a purpose, that's the road to liberation through this process of Jagya. But if we take all of this energy and uh, use it for our own sense verification, then what happens is that we become more and more tangled up in this material existence. That we lose the plan, we lose the plot, and then we become engrossed in that concept of I, me, and mine. And so this is mine, the lower stages of life, that I, me, and mine. So certainly then we, uh, because we stop the uh, yagyas and stop offering uh, the thanking the law for what uh, he's given us, we turn our back on the Lord and we just become very, very selfish in our own way, we get punished by the laws of nature. That's verified in the next slide where it says that the devotees of the Lord, they're released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered in sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat sin. Very, very heavy. <laughs> Heavy, heavy, heavy purple, a heavy sloka there. So this is where the clashes come into play. As soon as we stop that sacrifice to the demigods, then the demigods aren't very, very happy, right? And then they can um, stop <coughs> uh, giving us all the benefits that are there within the earth. And then we have all the different sort of um, we have no rain, we have too much rain, we have drought, we have fire and that is all coming from the demigods and then of course um, the Audi Baltics because we are becoming very very selfish 
we misidentify with ourselves and we don't get on with any, any other living entity or all other living entities and consequently have what we have got today in the age of Kali Yuga. Manda Samanda Mate, Amanda Bhagya Upadrita, quarrel, hypocrisy. And it's just very, very difficult to get on with each other. Get on in society, get on with other societies, other countries, and even get on with people in their own family. That is so hard in itself also. So therefore, and also we have the other Baltic uh, like our own species, but then all the other species also are, 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 um, are being <coughs> mistreated and the demigods see uh, uh, because we're mistreating energy, the energy uh, within this material world, the demigods are withholding and we see that even the big karmis, it says all the other species that are there in other nature, we see it's becoming very austere. Instead of beautiful trees, we see very inauspicious trees that don't give any fruit, don't give any shade. And then instead of nice swans and peacocks um, gravitating everywhere, we have crows and all these other um, different um, inauspicious birds and then insects instead of having nice grasshoppers and ladybugs or whatever we have um, insects that bite us and create disturbances like cicadas so this is all going wrong it's all going belly up due to our misidentification with ourself that we are thinking this body i me and mine we have no longer any connection with our real self so when that happens, the Adi comes into play that our mind becomes bewildered because we can't get enough. But so sort of trying to enjoy sense gratification is like pouring oil, uh, like mixing oil and water. It just doesn't work. Or another example probably gives this uh, pouring petrol on the fire to try to put the fire out. More sense gratification um, just leads us into further entrapment. So this is where we have the Adi Atmik, Adi Baltic, and Adi Devic. They become our, our miseries, our, uh, our, our clashes, the things that cause us difficulty in this material world. So this is the situation within the material world that we have the different categories of human beings who we deal with. We have the Kamis, the Gyanis, and the Yogis. So the Kamis, so most of the that's where we get the word karma is because people in the world today they want to accumulate more and more that the material energy has to give them and it's um, th that is the shelter that is the goal of life to actually become well established in society not only when you're um, using your senses to um, accumulate all these things in your body, but also the subtle ones, fame, adoration and distinction. So and this is where people say want to leave a mark on this world, famous or adored by everybody, and that, that is the success of people in this life. So, but what happens is they're oblivious of their temporary lifespan, they have no knowledge of the self, and through ignorance they're cast back into all the different species of this material world to uh, repeat life again and again. The, they've lost the plan. Then there's the Gyanis who want to go a little bit higher and they study different things in the material world. We have so many different ologies, sociology, um, uh, archaeology, geology, astrology, psychology. <laughs> So all the different sort of studies of the um, different psyches, just like Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport here, that people get carried away by studying this material energy. Just like if you want to study animals, like I was saying, so many different animals have so many different instincts. So you become engrossed in nature or trees, the different, there's like so many millions of species of animals, so many millions species of trees, aquatics, insects, so on and so forth. So if you become distracted, even rocks, you study rocks for their sedimentary value or whatever, um, or past civilizations, 
But it's all the fact that actually Krishna is the source, the Paramatma is the source within all these species. So you're just studying the shell, you're not actually going inside. So therefore, <coughs> that jnana, that knowledge is missing. You're missing the boat. So that's another waste of a life. Or the yogis, they understand, well, this material energy is very, very um, harsh and cruel and there is no satisfaction, so get out. So through the process of controlling their senses, sometimes negating their senses, nati, nati, not this, not that, they uh, try to envelop the stillness where they um, understand that the, the, the body is just a material thing, it's a temporary thing and there is a permanence about themselves and then that they identify that permanence with themselves as being they are part of God. I've conquered my senses, I've become part of this oneness. It's actually it's saying it's all one. It's getting very very tiresome now. We're all one. It's been going on for decades. So that is also a misidentification because in the purports here it's given Vidanti Tattatva Vidas um Brahmati Paramatviti um Bhagavanidi subject that what they're studying is just the first step in God realization. They're just uh, seeing the sun's rays, just like someone sees the light of the sun and they say, Oh, where's this light coming from? Oh, it's not coming from the sun, no, it can't, it's just light, you know. It's <laughs> just a misidentification. Or coming from the sun, but the sun's just an object, it's not a personality behind the sun. It's just put there for us and it's giving us light regularly at regular intervals. If we move away from the sun a little bit then we'll all freeze. If we move closer we'll all burn. But no, no, it's just a chance that it's there and we're revolving around here like we do in the seasons. Everything's on time. So no, there's no personality there. So that's a misidentification. So the karmis, jnanis and yogis, they're all <coughs> existing here in this material world and uh, Srila Prabhupada explains it's a misdirected civilization. They're going nowhere. They're caught up within the um, ropes of this material universe and it's called samsara. So the answer is the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is what we're studying right now. This actually gives us perspective on where we should be at. And in the 11th canto of the Sri Bhagavatam, we are given the solution as in many other places. Krishna Varnam Krishna Krishnam Sangal Pankas Traparasharam Yagya Sankirtanam Praye Yajanti is made a that in this age, this age here of Kali Yuga, people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord who is accompanied by his associates by the performance of Sankaran Jagya, chanting Hare Krishna. So this is the easy process that <coughs> Krishna has been so merciful that to get us back on track, we just vibrate his uh, names and then we once again re-establish our acquaintance with the Lord, we understand our spiritual identity. So that is the uh, sum and substance of uh, <coughs> our existence in, in the world today and we get back to the blueprint that the Lord has provided for us. Do we have any other um, comments or questions at this point? Yes? Oh, you're just brushing a fly, okay. <coughs> Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much, Jai. Oh boy, sure, Papa.